Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, I will introduce myself and tell you a little bit about this class I uh, want to share with you, and then uh, we'll open the stage for all my wonderful students uh, for being here. My name is Galit Gertzenzon. I'm originally from Israel, and um, I actually have in my family, uh, my father is a Holocaust survivor. So uh, I just discovered it recently, several years ago, and um, I have been playing music associated with the Holocaust for the past 20 years. And no, I'm not 25, I know this is what you all think, but uh, for almost 20 years I have been uh, playing music by composers who um, either were banned by the Nazis or were killed in concentration camps. Um, and last year I was fortunate to start a design class um, that discussing all those types of music and performing them. So these are uh, the students who um, took the class a year ago and we have one uh, representative from this year's class um, and let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, when I teach music of the Holocaust, I usually teach it to those who are not uh, music majors, um, and there is a lack of knowledge. Um, it seems like people do not know that music was a part of the historical events of the Holocaust. So when you study in high school, or even history classes at the college about the events of the Holocaust and Second World War, uh, there's not always a mention to uh, musicians uh, living imprisoned in concentration camps or musicians whose music or ethnicity was banned, uh, whose work was banned by the Nazis due to uh, their ethnicity. And so what I'm trying uh, to do in this class, being a musician myself, I'm a piano player, um, I am trying to approach this music to not necessarily those who play it, but some of them play or sing it, but those who have uh, various majors at the university. Um, and we look at the music as a response to different um, events that happened uh, through the Holocaust. So when we start every semester with an introduction of what does it mean to say music from the Holocaust? What kind of music are we looking at? Um, so we're actually starting for music at the beginning of the 20th century. Um, such as jazz. And uh, jazz was one of the major musical styles that was banned by the Nazis. Um, they had used the propaganda to uh, ban certain types of music. So jazz, American music was one of them. Uh, music by gypsies was another one. Uh, music by Jews or even music that they thought was written by Jews was also banned. Um, you might ask, so what music was accepted? Uh, the Nazis had um, taken Wagner as a model of uh, music that should be played, an Aryan music, or music by Beethoven, for example. So any music by a German composer was in. Any music by a minority, uh, by someone whose ethnicity was not Aryan, was out. And so they had done this. Uh, in a very organized way through legislation uh, once they got into power in 1933. Um, what amazing is that they also had required every artist or musician go and register and say this, what, what ethnicity they belong to so they could ban all of those that were not in the circle of Aryan music. So this is how we start the class. We talk about um, the term degenerate music. What's degenerate? How did Nazis see degenerate music? And we uh, look at jazz from New Orleans, and we look at jazz that uh, went from America to Weimar in Germany, and we look at any avant-garde uh, composers, such as Schoenberg and Berg, and um, we look at um, Debussy, and French composers that were also banned by the Nazis. Um, and this is sort of the, the, the start of our class. But then how do we approach looking at musical pieces um, that, for example, were written in a concentration camp? We take a theme such as, for example, music and resistance, 
and we try to make a connection between music in, in a concentration camp, how is it expressing resistance? Uh, what, what is it in the music that uh, responds to whatever events a composer was experiencing while imprisoned in the concentration camp? And we can look at certain types of music in many lenses. We can look at music as a source of healing, as a source of resistance, um, as a source of hope. And what we've done through the semester, we had um, themed, we tried to have a theme for every week in the semester. And we looked at um, musical life in the ghettos, for example. So we did have a historical survey uh, of some of the, of the geographical places in, in Europe where music was done. But we also looked at um, individual composers, uh, such as a young composer in, who was Czech. Uh, his name was Gideon Klein. And we looked at his music before he was entered, uh, entered the camp, while he was at the camp. And we looked, what is it in the music is expressing what he was going through? And I, I would say that, and, and if there is any musicologist in the room, you might disagree with me, but I think that musical expression is universal. Uh, whether we are looking at Western music or Arab music or Indian music, there is some uh, communication in music that all of us, whether we play or not, uh, or sing for others or only sing in the shower, we all see something universal about the message in music. And this is what, uh, one of the things that we try to uh, connect all the students to. Um, I think they, they will be telling you about their backgrounds and their majors, and you will see that not all of them are music uh, majors. Um, we also looked at suffering through music. So we would uh, listen, for example, to a piano piece written in the concentration camp and try to see what is it in the sound that make us feel not at ease. What is it in the sound, maybe a, a dissonance, which dissonance is when sounds are clashing, they don't agree with each other. What does it mean um, when we look at it at the perspective of um, the time it was written. And we also looked at music as propaganda. We looked at Nazi music, the German um, hymns that were played for uh, the Hitler youth. We wanted to see both sides, the music that was uh, considered degenerate, but also the music that was considered, this is what the German Aryan youth uh, should be listening to. Um, and we also looked at music that was composed after the Holocaust, in response to the Holocaust, by American composer uh, Steve Reich, uh, by Arnold Schoenberg, who was banned in the 30s, escaped Germany, and landed in LA, and became a very renowned uh, music professor in the US. So we looked at uh, music throughout um, the first half of the 20th century and even some music that was written in the uh, 80s and the 90s. And we had various um, assignments for this class. Now when I started teaching in the honors, I had heard a motto from several different people. And they said, the honor students at Ball State, whatever you ask them to do, they are going to do. So you can ask them to read any books, write, research, perform, and they will do it. And so, whoever told me this, several people, they were all correct. So some of our assignments, and I'm sorry about that, but you all got A's, so that, that's, that means we did a good job. Um, so we had uh, various assignments. The, the most um, basic assignments, uh, these were reflections, weekly reflections. Uh, we actually with specific questions about what we've discussed during that week. So at the end of the week, the students had a chance to um, reflect on the music in their own way, not, not necessarily the way I was looking at the music. Um, they also had a presentation at the end of the semester. They chose whatever thing they thought was interesting. Um, Karina did a presentation on uh, gypsy music. 
uh, Courtney did a presentation on the music she had learned in a Hebrew school throughout her Jewish education in Indianapolis. Um, we, we had various um, themes, and I actually, I learned a lot from my students, and I'm incorporating some of these themes into my uh, course this year. Uh, but the combination of this class, and this is uh, my, I guess, my way to try and have my students remember what we've done in this class in, in, in a manner of a lifelong learning, was a concert, and is a concert, and I just want to show you, I know this is very small, uh, this is a booklet that has the entire program. Um, I can, I guess I could just give you this so you can take a look. Thanks. And um, feel free to just um, pass it between everyone. Um, so this concert is also an assignment, and it's titled as a artistic expression. Now you might ask me, well, not everybody is a musician, how, how do we make a concert apply for the entire class? Um, so we are uh, fortunate to have about three, four students who can either play or sing. Um, last year we had a pianist. Uh, this year we did not have a pianist in the class, but I, I, I can play, so I accompany my students, which is a great pleasure. Um, and we have students who enjoy performing, but they don't play an instrument, so they get to either read uh, prose or poems that they find, they research on their own, and then they present it to our audience. Um, we also have students who are not so excited about standing and presenting for audience, and that is perfectly okay, because they can do other things uh, to contribute to the course, such as designing a poster. Um, now this is something that I find, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, now this, if you look at the video, you see a poster um, that, that's very similar, well that's, that's Natalie, she's right here, um, but, but the poster is also an artistic work of one of the students, and last year it was Morgan who designed uh, the, the font of the uh, booklet that you'll see in blue, and this year what we're trying to do is every student has to take something from last year and express themselves in a new poster, but we want to keep some sort of a legacy and, and taste that goes on from year to year. So this is um, this year um, concert, which if anyone is in Mansi on Thursday, I know it's not likely, but we do have a concert coming up um, Thursday at seven. So we have a student who uh, designs the poster that goes across the university. Um, the booklet that you're looking at was also designed by students. Um, it looks kind of trivial, thinking, well, they're taking the class just to do a poster or a booklet, but that's not um, exactly the case, uh, because for the booklet, they have to make some research. Um, you see those paragraphs, so some of these were written by the uh, presenters of the music, and some of these were designed by whoever uh, was working on the booklet. Um, the two students who were working on this booklet had graduated, so they're not here with us. Uh, but uh, we had also uh, Courtney, for example, uh, recording the entire concert and then uh, distributing the recordings to all the students. So they have a lot of memories to share um, and they have something to take with them after the course is uh, finished. Now what I um, also wanted to do, so I will open this for questions uh, when we finish, but I do want to, to hear each of the students and see uh, what was their role last year and this year and we also have some music for you. So I will let them uh, speak, and uh, this is Drew. Hi, uh, I am graduating <coughs> this year. I'm a composition major. Um, I uh, want to write music for a living. Who knows how well that would go, but um, my role, um, or at least this year, I still have time to fail the course, but like, um, <laughs> Not <half of>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I took a uh, handful of manuscripts uh, from this uh, under-researched uh, composer, James Simon, and I put them in finale so that she could read them. And yes, um, so just um, just one, one more aspect of this class. Uh, there is a lot of music that has not been discovered yet. 
Uh, this music is laying right now in uh, uh, various archives around the world. Um, and some of the music is, we're lucky enough to have it digitized. Uh, and just a few <coughs> weeks ago, I found music by uh, composer James uh, Simon that I knew had only one piece discovered, and I played it many, many years ago. And then just a few weeks ago, somehow I got across um, some new digitized scores. And since I have a composer in the class, and he needs to get an A, I <laughs> and I said, well, how about this? Can you transcribe? Now, I'll, I'll just give you an example. Um, these are, this is not James Simon, but James Simon's music looks like this. Um, it doesn't look very clear. So if I wanted to play this, I would have a really um, long process of trying to get what's on the score. Uh, and this is where Drew got into the picture, and he would send me uh, the transcribed uh, version around 2 a.m. in the morning and said, okay, I finished the first one, I'm going to sleep now. <laughs> so I, I just want to give you an example of how this music that um, has never been uh, performed yet and had not been recorded yet, so this is the next project for, um, as part of research in this class, is to record this music. Um, the piece was written... Um, in the late 30s, I believe, and it's called Gedenken, which means uh, something to do with the memory. And you will also notice that even though he was a 20th century composer, his music is post-romantic, so it's, it's pretty um, pleasant to hear. <laughs> collection, but this, this is a collection that's in New York City, in Lowbeck Institute, 
Um, and I'm still in the process of figuring out exactly the background um, of, of this piece and other pieces. But it is something that I am able to do with the help of Andrew. And um, I guess I should let you speak more on that. Now. <laughs> Uh, I, I should let you know that it, it really is no easier for uh, me to actually read these. I just do it over the course of six hours heavily caffeinated. That's, that's <laughs> really it. Um, but I mean, the, the cool thing about having to transcribe these is, uh, well, the moral of the story is everything's under-researched. So uh, composers slip completely under the radar, especially if they were seen and then banned later. Um, so it's just... Uh, it's tools that I can put in, in my pocketbook uh, now that I would not have even noticed. I, I wouldn't have noticed their absence. Um, so there's something in it for me, I suppose, as, as a composer. I've got, I've got more, uh, more tools in my tool belt. And uh, Karina? So coming from the thing. Uh, she will tell you everything about the background, but, but what I was very touched by, she agreed to sing a song uh, that is very famous in Israel and was written by a, um, a, a woman who was Hungarian. Uh, she immigrated to uh, Israel um, sometime in the 30s, but then when the Second World War broke off, she decided that she's going back to Europe and fight against the Nazis, and she became a parachute. So the song is in Hebrew, and then Karina can tell you about her background and how did she get to sing it. Hi, I'm Karina. Um, I ended up, for, my con for the concert last year, my only role was to sing this piece, Eli Eli. Um, it was written by Hannah Sinesh, who Dr. G gave you her background. Um, it was one of the first pieces that we had heard in the class because the first day Dr. G played a bunch of pieces for us and I heard this song and I fell in love with it because it's such a beautiful piece. And then when we were, when I was trying to choose a piece to sing for the concert, Dr. G was sending me all like, we, I had a whole list of songs that I could have chosen, but I kept gravitating back to this specific piece because it's a really beautiful piece. It's kind of haunting and kind of makes me a little sad. <laughs> but it's a very, very pretty piece. Would you like to sing it? <laughs> okay. okay. So we'll, we'll perform this piece. Um, and uh, one more thing about the score. We had a student who is not a composition major, uh, but he can do anything. He's a percussion major, minoring in piano, <laughs> who played a very difficult piece at the concert. His name is David Kuo. And he also had arranged the music a little bit lower so it can fit Karina's uh, voice. And I just have to find the music.
Uh, this is um, the uh, Canva Anthem for Buchenwald. Um, it's kind of, uh, I'll play it and it'll sound char uh, uncharacteristically uh, cheerful, um, but it's, it's kind of a, it's a casual intersection between uh, lyrics that will motivate writers and the style of music that was approved by the third right. So it, it makes sense why it sounds like this, but it's really just a, it's kind of a march. So this was um, this was an anthem that was a very um, um, I'm gonna say a sort of like a custom for every concentration camp to have, um, and for this particular for the Buchenwald song, uh, the person who ordered to write the song was the, one of the SS commanders uh, of the place that asked uh, a composer who was imprisoned in Buchenwald. Uh, named Hermann Leopoldi, uh, Leopoldi uh, to write this and um, he was so pleased with this anthem that uh, it was played over and over in the camp. <laughs>
And we spent a lot of evenings and weekends at the School of Music rehearsing, uh, which I thought it was fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, um, and we have something to look back, uh, a recording to look back uh, into. And also, uh, for the concert we're having this week, we have a saxophone player uh, who's playing a different movement from that Pablo Haas piece also arranged by another composer so it can fit his uh, instrument. So, so that, that's some continuation we can have uh, for me to hear. And then Maggie was uh, reading uh, several songs that, that you had chosen on your own. Um, hi, I'm Maggie. I'm a junior psychology major. And um, you can probably tell, like, psychology, I'm, I'm not a musician at all. I've never really played an instrument, and so I wanted to read poetry, because poetry is something I've loved since I was a child, but it was um, pretty daunting, because I typically do spoken word slam poetry, and that would not be appropriate for a concert like this, um, so I chose some poems that were written either by survivors or people trying to pay tribute, and um, I kind of realized that it wasn't about me and that helped me get over my nerves and it was just really amazing to get to do something like this where I could honor the people who lost their lives in the Holocaust or their lives were dramatically changed forever in it. And yeah, I just, I'm really thankful that I took this class. I still rave about it to everyone. Um, people are kind of like, why would you want to take that class that sounds so depressing? And there were days where it was really hard, um, but it's history, and I think that history is very important. And so I'm just really thankful that you taught this class and I got an opportunity to be in it. And if you guys can go to the concert on Thursday, I highly recommend it. Um, it's just a really cool experience. I'm a percussionist, but I decided not to do a percussion piece because I can't play piano and a snare drum piece wouldn't have been very fitting. So I read um, Martin Niemöller's poem, First They Came, in German. Um, I'm a history major and a German minor, and I chose to read this poem in its original German because I thought it added authenticity to the poem. And also, I feel like a lot of Americans associate the German language with harshness and brutality, probably because the only time they hear it is in World War II movies. And so I wanted to show that German is a beautiful language, and it's not just the language of the Nazis, it's also one of the language of the many survivors. Um, and I really enjoyed the concert too. I really like honoring um, people by sharing their poetry, sharing their voices. Um, and you could tell how moved the audience was by the performance. We had people afterwards. We had someone who joined in with Karina, like singing the song, an older gentleman, it was really beautiful. We had um, people afterwards who were just really moved. It was a very special experience to be able to share the music and the words of the people who suffered. Thank you. Sam? Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a junior bio pre-med major, so I'm not a music major at all. I do play in the symphony orchestra here at Ball State, though. Um, violin is one of my passions. I love it, and when I found out that they were doing a music and Holocaust class, I immediately signed up, even though it was at 8 in the morning. Um, <laughs> <Still is>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, an 8 in the morning class that talks entirely about the Holocaust sounded like the worst idea in the world, but it ended up being probably one of my favorite classes that I've ever taken, um, and I've taken a lot of really good ones. So. I completely, I loved the experience. I love talking about all the composers. Gideon Klein is probably my favorite one. We've had many, many conversations <laughs> about it. Um, and so I was very fortunate to be able to play in the concert last year, and I'm very fortunate to be able to TA the class this year uh, and play again in the concert this year. Would you like to play? Today? Sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> So um, this, the, the piece is, okay, so Sam, last year she played uh, two pieces. One of them was um, a very famous uh, piece by Maurice Ravel uh, titled Kaddish. 
uh, Kaddish is a Jewish player that uh, stayed uh, after the death of a person, but it's also a prayer that is said on uh, Shabbat services um, in the synagogue. So this, this was one of the pieces she played, and she also played uh, the thing from Schindler, Schindler's List, uh, by a composer who is not associated, not, not historically associated with the Holocaust. However, John Williams had written uh, a lot of music for uh, movies that had uh, Jewish uh, themes or Holocaust themes. And so uh, this year, Sam is uh, performing a piece by um, Robert Daubert, who also um, has a very um, small amount of music that has survived. And uh, this piece titled Serenade uh, is, is one of them. Uh, and Dauber also had died in uh, Theresienstadt concentration camp. So uh, I do have to say that we had uh, one and a half rehearsals on the piece and we are planning uh, to get very little sleep until yes. Thursday to be able to uh, perform it, so the, our audience. Uh, so what we will do today is we'll give you just a taste from the beginning of that piece. And, um, it was written in Theresienstadt concentration camp in 1942. <laughs> <laughs> So um, I think 
Well, first of all, I want to thank all of you uh, for being here, and I want to thank the students for being here. And uh, I do want to have an opportunity to answer any questions that you may have. Um, if anyone would like to uh, stay in touch after this um, talk, I'm always happy to answer any questions uh, if any of you are uh, doing research uh, related to um, those events. But um, I'm, I'm happy, to, uh, I guess we're all happy to answer any questions you may have uh, this time. Yes. Um, this isn't really a question, but I recently went to the book first now and you read the uh, poem um, and then the one you said in German. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, could you read some of it for us? Oh, I don't have it with me. No, I would love to if I could. Um, I can pull it up. I mean, I mean it's okay. <laughs> you know, I could try to find it. Yeah, there's different versions, so yeah. I can try to find it. I just think it's cool because when we were at Auschwitz, we actually read that poem in, like, by the, um, by the grave site. While she's calling that up, I wonder if others uh, on, the, on the panel can just speak to the audience reaction from the concert. What kinds of expected or unexpected responses did you get from folks who attended the concert that you were a part of? What sort of feedback did you get? Um, I would say, first of all, um, let me start by, by telling you where the concert is taking place. Um, this is in, in a smaller performance hall. It's not intimidating in any way. I think it's about well, it's larger than this room, but, but it's an intimate setting. Um, we had, so the hall houses uh, around 100 people, and this is the number of people that came. We had um, families of students who were performing. We had friends of students. We had uh, a good number of um, people from the Jewish community in Mansi, which uh, is about 25 families. So we, so we had a good uh, representing number. Uh, we also had uh, colleagues from Ball State who came to see the concert, uh, some retired professors. Um, and, and I think, yeah, this, this was about the number. Now, the, um, I think you mentioned when Karina was uh, singing a lead, lead um, this is for anyone who had spent some time in Israel. This is a very uh, familiar song. And we had a man who's in his, uh, well into his 70s, uh, very much emotionally moved. Uh, this is a song that is taught um, from younger ages to all the kids, and so he was very moved, he was in tears. Uh, there were Holocaust survivors in the uh, audience as well that were very moved. Um, we felt that this was uh, more than just a concert, it was a gathering of people from different backgrounds that, that just came together as a community. Um, and therefore, I. I'm hoping that we can every year have it in this setting that's more intimate, more uh, welcoming rather than a big uh, performance hall where people can get lost in the size. But I don't know if you have anything else to add to how you felt about this performance. But I hope I'm answering your question. Yeah, thank you. Yes? Uh, this goes to, I think, Morgan, you said uh, designed the cover. So what was your inspiration for designing that? Right, so I guess tackling something like this it is a little different than the usual design. A lot of design pieces are more fun and um, you can like play around with fonts or colors or whatever, but with this being a more serious concert, something to honor people, um, I kind of had to take a step back and think about how to present it in a serious yet elegant way. Um, so I kind of tried to keep it pretty simple, um, and yeah, we added all of our, our names on there, which is really neat, and posted it around uh, this, not even only the School of Music, but the, the Honors House and all of that. Um, but yeah, it was it was a different design challenge for me, for sure, but yeah. And, and every student, so I, I think last year I uh, printed about 100 copies, and one more uh, assignment that each student had was take 10 copies and post it everywhere on campus that you can. Um, and this really helped us um, getting more interested people to hear what we had to share with the community. I found a poem. <laughs> it's, it's not the version I read, but it's similar. Um, it roughly, I'm sure most of you have heard it. Um, it roughly translates to, uh, it goes through four verses and it says, when the Nazis came for a different group of people, I didn't do anything because I wasn't them. So the first line is, 
when the Nazis came for the communists, I did nothing because I was not a Nazi. And then in the end it says, when the Nazis came for me, there was no one left to speak for me. So I can, I can read it. I haven't read German in a while. Okay. Als die Nazis die Kommunisten holten, habe ich geschwiegen. Ich war ja kein Kommunist. Als die Soldaten, als die Soldaten Demokraten einsperrten, habe ich geschwiegen. Ich war ja kein Soldat Demokrat. Als sie Gewerkschafter holten, habe ich geschwiegen. Ich war ja kein Gewerkschafter. Als sie die Juden holten, habe ich geschwiegen. Ich war ja kein Jude. Als sie mich holten, gab es keinen mehr, der protestierten konnte. So the last line is, when they came for me, there was no one left. transcribed that piece, um, did you listen to it, uh, did you transcribe it auditorily, or did oh, you no, find I, the words? There weren't recordings available, otherwise I would have, uh, I would have availed myself of that resource. But yeah, uh, hopefully we're going to get recordings out of these pieces, and we'll have the first ones, the first ones out. Yes? Will you continue that project in a later class? Uh, yes, so one of the plans for, uh, for, I guess, first for me, as, as a person who, um, who's trying to research this music continuously is uh, to record some of these pieces in a professional manner so that we can perhaps produce a CD that will represent our um, honors college. Um, for the rest of the students, uh, we I, I will have them incorporated in any um, project such as recordings, uh, designing the, you know, if it's a CD, so designing uh, the work. And I'm also hoping, uh, as, as you see, most of the students in this group are, have taken the class a year ago, and I swear I did not pay them anything to be here. They just uh, wanted to be here. So I'm hoping that whoever had taken this class can come back for a future project we're doing um, and, and continue learning and representing the Honors College and also uh, themselves, obviously, in, uh, in whatever research they are doing. So um, one more thing we have, um, at, at the beginning of May, I will have a um, student that's, take, that's currently taking this class uh, perform her pieces in a concert in Indianapolis uh, for the Jewish community there. So we are um, continuously trying to have more students being able to play this music and then branch out and on their own as well and promoting and commemorating this music. Um, and I do want to add uh, one more thing. Uh, well, Dean, uh, who left the room, uh, w was a very um, helpful and supportive source in how this class is um, uh, done uh, currently. He was the one who said, uh, when I took this class, I, I had taken this class from the, the, the theme of the Holocaust class from a previous uh, professor who um, retired. And so my idea was, this is a history class, so I need to focus on the history. And uh, Dr. Emmert said, don't focus on the history, focus on music, uh, and be you, and be focus on what you are doing best. And so this is how we had taken this class into a musical concentration. And actually, the, um, the concert, um, which I was reluctant to try and design, because I wasn't sure uh, what kind of uh, students I will have in the class, uh, was pretty much his recommendation to say, make a salon, have a gathering. A and this is where a lot of ideas um, developed. So he's not here, but, but I do uh, want to mention that he was a very supportive source for this. Um, I also want to mention before everybody uh, goes, that if you have any questions about uh, finding music, um, or finding resources to research this music, please be in touch. Um, there are several books here that we had uh, been using in our course um, to look into the music and the life of the composers, so you're more than welcome to take a look. Um, and any other questions, I'd be happy to answer. Out of time, okay.